In this video, I will share with you how to survive a computer science degree. Now, computer science can be a difficult degree. I know many people that struggle in this. I know many people that change degrees or disciplines and actually dropped out of the program. I myself actually did drop out of computer science about two years ago, not because I had bad marks, but because I wanted to pursue YouTube, business, and a few other things that I was doing. And at the time that I dropped out, I had honors. I had a 9.2 out of 10 GPA. I believe that makes it around kind of a low to mid 80 average. And this was me pretty much doing no work in the degree and just barely getting by. That's the grade point that I was able to achieve by just really sitting back and relaxing. Now, I don't say that to brag, but to hopefully give myself some credibility here as I go through these tips, I promise you that this degree does not need to be as hard as you're probably making it for yourself. And I'm hopefully going to share with you some ways to make it easier in this video. So before we get into these tips, I just want to ask you what you guys think of my new camera angle. I just got a new camera, so I've set it up here as kind of a side angle. Obviously, I have my main camera as well. Do you guys like this one better? this one does one of them look better than the other let me know in the comments and with that said let's get into the video after a quick word from our sponsor before we get started i need to thank sign now for sponsoring this video sign now lets you sign documents online generate agreements negotiate contracts and accept payments best of all sign now provides a powerful api that allows you to embed e-signatures directly on your website as a developer, you'll love SignNow's detailed documentation and video tutorials, as well as the ability to test your apps for free and deploy them quickly. The SignNow API is available through straightforward SDKs and allows you to complete entire document approval cycles from uploading documents to tracking signature progress. SignNow e-signatures are legally binding and compliant with the highest standards of data privacy and security. Start your free API trial today and get 250 free signature invites by clicking the link in the description. Thanks again to Sign Now for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's dive into it with tip number one, which is to learn on your own. Now, I know this seems obvious, but especially in a computer science degree, you cannot rely on your professor or really anyone else to teach you the course content. You need to learn it on your own. And even if you do learn a bit from your professor or the TAs or whoever's instructing you, a majority of what you're actually going to need to know, you're going to have to learn on your own and you're going to have to practice on your own. So I just want to make this clear because a lot of people seem to think that they're going to get all of the knowledge they need by going to a bunch of lectures, reading the textbook and just following the basic thing that most people do in other degrees. Most people that I know that are in like arts degrees or history degrees, a majority of what they learn is from the lecture or from reading a textbook. In computer science, that's probably not how you're going to learn a lot of the content. You're probably going to be watching videos like mine. You're going to be going and searching stuff up on Stack Overflow. You're going to be looking at code examples. A lot of stuff you're going to learn is just not going to come from a lecture. So you need to kind of change your perspective around, OK, my professor is going to teach this to me to I'm going to have to learn this on my own. It's great if my professor helps me learn this. That's how I kind of approached university. OK, this is the topic. This is the curriculum. All right, I'm going to have to figure out a way to learn this. If the professor is good, that's great, but the chance that they're going to be good is pretty small, at least from my experience. And even if they are, again, they just don't teach a lot of the stuff that you need to know. And it's really, really difficult to teach programming, especially in a lecture environment. So hopefully this is coming through a bit, but you need to learn a lot of stuff on your own. For me, by the time I was actually in my second year of university, I only went to about 20% of my lectures. I just stayed at home pretty much all day and studied on my own. It was a much better use of my time to spend 30 or 45 minutes going through the same material that would be covered in the lecture. I could then focus on what I found difficult rather than what other people found difficult. And I just was much more efficient and learned a lot more when I did it on my own rather than relying on my professors. All right. So tip number two. I know this is another basic one, but this is to make friends. Now, I know that everyone tells this to you that you've heard this a million times, but it is very, very important to have a few resources other than a professor that you can go to and ask for help, ask for the homework, ask when an assignment is due and just get some general information from. The amount of time that my computer science friends saved me and that I was able to save them was just unbelievable because some of them were really good at this math topic and I was really good at the programming topic. So we would exchange notes or we would help each other. Sometimes we even have, you know, a 20 minute tutoring session where I would teach them something. They would teach me something. Those are the kind of friends you want to look for where you can get some benefit from them and they can give an equal benefit to you. 
then alternatively, you already know who you're going to be uh, partners with or in a group with whenever something like that comes up. You don't have to deal with kind of the horrible gamble of getting a really bad teammate or someone who's just not going to show up or doesn't do any work. You already know who you're going to be working with, and it just makes everything a lot easier and honestly, a lot more enjoyable as well. A lot of times I didn't want to study for something or I didn't want to be writing this code, but I knew that my teammate depended on me or I had agreed with my friend that he was going to do this portion of the homework and I was going to do the other portion of the homework. So I had to get the stuff done because he was relying on me and I was relying on him and it kind of forced us to do a bit more work and just made it a bit more fun as well. We we're kind of chatting along the way. We're in a discord call, etc. So I would highly encourage you to try to make a few friends. It's not that difficult to do. Everyone in these courses wants someone else to talk to or to get some help with a specific topic or exchange notes, etc. So just strike up a conversation, ask someone what laptop they have. That's the easiest way that I would make friends and say, oh, what, you know, what computer is that? Is that brand new? And then all of a sudden, you know, all the nerds in the class are talking about it and we've just made a few friends. Moving on to the next tip. All right. So tip number three is to be extremely pragmatic with your time. Now, I've talked about this in a lot of videos, but I have to say it here because it's just super important. You need to make sure that you are evaluating your time and you understand how much time you're putting into something and what you're getting out from that task. So when it comes to studying or trying to complete a project or an assignment, etc., you have to really ask yourself, is my X number of hours giving me a sufficient reward for me to justify actually putting in that many hours? Now, the example I always use is going to lectures. For a lot of people, an hour and a half in a lecture is worth their time. They're going to learn something from that lecture and it's going to be better than if they were to sit at home and play video games because they know if they don't go to the lecture, they're not going to study. For me, I know I have the discipline to study on my own, so it was not worth an hour and a half for me to go to a lecture. Instead, I would learn the same content on my own and usually half the time or only 30 minutes. So now I can kind of do three or four lectures in the span of two hours, two and a half hours at home, rather than my whole day being spent out in a lecture hall where I can't do other types of work where I can't film a YouTube video or I can't do other tasks that I want to complete in the day. So you just have to be very careful where you are putting your time, not just in computer science, but in other tasks as well. And you have to ask yourself, what am I getting back from that? Now, another example I like to use is rewriting notes. I know a lot of people that do this, and my theory behind why people do tasks like this is because it makes them feel productive and it's a relatively simple thing to do. So it's pretty hard to go and learn a new topic on your own or to go do a ton of practice questions or write a practice exam. That's a more mentally stimulating or challenging task. Whereas reading a textbook or rewriting notes feels like you're getting a lot done because you're writing, you know, seven or eight pages of the same notes you've already written. But are you really getting that much out of that task? For some people, they might be, but for me, it would never be worth it to rewrite a note. I've never done that and I will never do that. I can promise you right now because it doesn't help me, even though I would think, you know, it give me some more retention. I think I'm going to learn a lot better if I really understand the topic well. And if I go look at multiple resources or hear multiple people that are explaining it in different ways, or I do practice questions and actually simulate what it's going to be like in an exam or in a test. That's what works for me. You have to figure out what works for you, but just be very careful where you're putting your time and if you're getting an adequate reward back for that time. So moving on here to tip number four is to take advantage of free marks. What I mean by this is that any mark that is relatively easy to obtain, so like an attendance mark, something like completing a lab, doing an assignment, maybe doing a small project. Sometimes large projects can be difficult or maybe you're not going to get 100 percent on them. But anything that's a pretty simple thing for you to do that really just requires a bit of effort and a bit of time, but it's going to give you 5 percent, 10 percent, 2 percent, whatever it is towards your mark. You absolutely need to do that uh, because that's just going to make it way easier on yourself when you come to the final exam exam. I saw so many people that just didn't do any of the assignments, didn't do any of the labs. And now all of a sudden they get to the final exam, which is worth 50% of their mark. And if they don't get a 90 on the final exam, they're going to fail the course. Or if they don't get a 75, they're going to fail. That puts an immense amount of pressure on them. In my opinion, that almost always makes them perform worse than if they didn't have the pressure and they can kind of chill a little bit. And it just really is not a good scenario to be in where you're at the end of the course. And now all of a sudden your entire grade is riding on a final exam. Now you switch right to the person who did all of the assignments, did all of the projects, earned all of these free marks by putting in a little bit of effort. Now they're at the end of the course and they only need a 33% on the exam to pass the course. I know a lot of exams you need to get 50%, but even if that's the minimum, they only need to get 50% on the exam to pass the course or to get a decent grade. 
I was in a lot of scenarios when I was writing final exams where the worst possible grade I was going to get in the course would be something realistically like an 80 because I know I'm going to get 50 or 60 percent on the exam. I know I'm going to study that much. So as long as I do that, I'm locking in an 80 in this course, right? That's the scenario you want to be in makes it way easier for yourself, reduces a lot of stress. And again, why wouldn't you take these free marks? Why would you wait until the end where you're getting quizzed on all of the content? You're going to have to spend countless hours studying. You just put a ton of pressure on yourself. And now you're really stressed out and worried about the final exam. And you probably have four other final exams that you've done the same thing. So just balance your workload out throughout the year. Spend a few hours each week earning these free marks. Then you can chill at the end of the year and you know you're going to be fine no matter what happens and you can study a little bit rather than a lot for the final or for the midterm or whatever it's going to end up being. So last point here is to balance your workload. Now, I know you've heard this before, but it's important to be reminded and kind of get a fresh perspective so you can remember why this is so important. So for me, I have this general kind of philosophy in life that I would rather work a few hours every day than work like three or four, 10 or 12 hour days each week. I would much rather do a bunch of six hour days than do like three 14 hour days, right? However, in university, I find that this is kind of flipped for most people. They would rather have like three days off and then do like four 10 hour days as opposed to just spending maybe four or five hours every single day doing some work. Now, I don't know if my math adds up, adds up there, sorry, but you get the point. So for me, I always like to spread out my tasks, kind of create a schedule for a week or two weeks in advance and say, I'm going to get this done today, this done tomorrow. I'm going to do this and this that day and give myself a manageable amount of work to handle every single day. Now, if there's a scenario where I don't finish something, that's OK, because it's a small task. I can carry it to the next day and I'm not building up this massive amount of work that I'm just like, oh, I'm going to spend Saturday all day and Sunday all day doing this. I don't want to do that. I feel miserable when I have to do that amount of work. And it's just really stressful because now you're in a scenario where you can't even afford to take an hour break. You can't even afford to go out with your friends if some plan comes up that you want to be a part of. You're just in this like locked in place where you have to do all of this work or you don't do it and then you lose all of the marks. Right. And in university, I lived with a bunch of guys. I saw a bunch of people. I knew many people in university. And this is what almost all of them did. They did not balance any of their work. They just cranked it all out on like the weekend or a Thursday or a Wednesday. Um, you know, they spent 16 hour nights doing stuff or cr uh, cramming for exams. And I saw how stressed they were, how much of a toll this took on them mentally. Whereas me, I was just sitting there chill. Oh, it's night for the exam. I don't really need to study. That's OK. I've been doing it for the past two weeks. Oh, you guys want to go out? Yeah, I'll come out with you. That's fine. I don't have to do anything because I've already done a lot of my work. Or if I don't do it, it's fine. I can complete it tomorrow. I'll just add an extra hour to my day rather than spending, you know, 20 hours doing a bunch of work. So hopefully this is resonating a little bit, it's just a much better headspace to be in when you slowly do stuff as opposed to let it all build up and try to finish it in one day. I also find you do a lot better work when you spend a few hours per day as opposed to just, you know, these marathons of trying to get a ton of stuff done. So with that said, I think I'm going to wrap up the video here. I hope you guys found this helpful. Hopefully some of this resonated with you and can get you some better grades in computer science or make it a little bit more manageable. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below, and I will see you in another YouTube video.